A black hole is like a giant vacuum cleaner that sucks everything in, even light. They are made when very big stars die and collapse into a very small point. They are very hard to see because they are very dark and very far away. But some black holes are not completely dark. They can shoot out streams of matter and energy from their poles, like fountains of water or fireworks. These streams are called jets, and they are very bright and fast. They can be as long as a galaxy or even longer, and they can travel at almost the speed of light. They can also make different kinds of light, such as radio waves, visible light, and X-rays. These jets are among the most energetic and spectacular phenomena in the cosmos, and they are very important for understanding how black holes work and how they affect the universe. Jets can shape the galaxies and clusters of galaxies where they live by blowing away gas and dust, or by heating up or cooling down the space around them. Jets can also tell us about the history and evolution of black holes by showing us how they grow and change over time. But how do jets work? How do they make particles go so fast and shine so bright? And how do they make different kinds of light, especially X-rays? These are some of the questions that scientists have been trying to answer for a long time, using special telescopes that can see different kinds of light. One of these telescopes is called Chandra, and it can take pictures of X-rays, which are like flashlights that can see through things. X-rays are very useful for studying jets, because they can show us things that other kinds of light cannot. For example, they can show us how hot and energetic the jets are, or how they interact with other things in space. A new study, which was published this week in Nature Astronomy, reveals that Chandra has found many jets that make X-rays, and some of them are very strong and hard to explain. They have more X-rays than we expect from the same particles that make radio waves. They also have different colors or shapes of X-rays than we expect from the same process that makes radio waves. Today we are going to talk about this surprising phenomenon that challenges our understanding of how black holes produce powerful jets of particles and radiation that can span millions of light years across the universe. So without further ado, let's get started. The most common idea for how jets make X-rays is called the ICCMB model. This idea says that the jets are very fast and point towards us and that they hit a very old and cold light that fills the universe. This light is called the Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB for short, and it is like a faint whisper from the beginning of time. The CMB light was created when the universe was very young and hot, about 13 billion years ago. It was part of a big explosion that started everything, called the Big Bang. Since then, the CMB light has been traveling across the universe, getting colder and weaker as the universe expands. Today, we can measure the CMB light with special machines that can detect microwaves, which are like radio waves but smaller. The CMB light has very low energy, but when it hits fast-moving electrons in the jet, it bounces back with more energy, like a ping-pong ball that hits a fast-moving car. This makes the CMB light turn into X-ray light. This is called inverse Compton scattering. Inverse Compton scattering is like playing ping-pong with light and electrons. When a low-energy photon, a particle of light, hits a high-energy electron, a particle of matter, it transfers some of its energy to the photon, making it more energetic. The photon then flies away with more energy than before, while the electron flies away with less energy than before. The ICCMB model predicts that the jets make X-rays by hitting the CMB light with fast-moving electrons. The faster the electrons are, and the more aligned the jet is to our line of sight, the more X-rays we see from inverse Compton scattering. The ICCMB model has some good points. For example, it does not need another kind of electrons to make X-rays, unlike other ideas that need very high-energy electrons. It also explains why some jets have similar radio and X-ray brightness, because they use the same electrons. But the ICCMB model also has some problems. For example, it needs very specific jet speeds and directions to match the X-ray brightness we see. It also does not explain some details of the X-ray light that show it is more complicated. But maybe the biggest problem with the ICCMB model is that it says that the X-ray brightness should not change over time, but it does. The new study used a clever way to look for changes in the X-ray brightness of 53 jets, with many pictures taken by Chandra over time. 
The study looked at 155 parts of these jets, from very close to very far from the black hole. The study counted how many X-ray flashes were seen in each part in different pictures, and calculated how likely it was that these changes were random or due to errors. This likelihood is called the p-value, and the lower it is, the more likely it is that the part is changing. The p-value is like a coin toss. If you toss a coin many times, you expect to get heads or tails about half of the time, but sometimes you can get more heads or more tails by chance. The study found that the p-values for all the parts were not random, but showed real changes in X-ray brightness. The study also found that 23 parts in 14 jets had very low p-values below 0.05, which means they are very likely changing. These parts change their X-ray brightness by 2 to 10 times on time scales of months to years. The study also checked if the changes could be due to changes in the jet speed or direction, which would affect how we see the ICCMB light. But they found no evidence for such changes, and they said they would be very rare and weird for them to happen so often and so far from the black hole. So they said that the changes were due to something else in the jet. Can you guess why variability is bad news for the ICCMB model? It means that the electrons in the jet are changing their energy too quickly for inverse Compton scattering to work. Remember that inverse Compton scattering needs low-energy electrons to make X-rays from the CMB light. But if the electrons change their energy too quickly, they will not have enough time to hit enough CMB photons to make enough X-rays. So if we see variability in X-rays, it means that inverse Compton scattering is not working well, and we need another idea to explain how jets make X-rays. The other idea for how jets make X-rays is called synchrotron emission by a second population of electrons with very high energies. Synchrotron emission happens when charged particles spin around magnetic fields and make light at different colors depending on their energy and the strength of the magnetic field. Synchrotron emission is like an electric guitar that makes sound when its strings vibrate around magnets, or a bicycle wheel that makes sparks when it spins around metal. The synchrotron idea says that the jets make X-rays by spinning very high-energy electrons around magnetic fields. These electrons are different from the ones that make radio waves, which have lower energies. The synchrotron idea also says that these electrons can change their energy quickly by losing or gaining energy from other things in the jet, such as shocks or turbulence. The synchrotron idea has some good points. For example, it explains why the jets can change their X-ray brightness over time, because the electrons can lose or gain energy quickly. It also explains why some jets can also make gamma rays, which are like very strong X-rays, by spinning very fast electrons around very strong magnetic fields. But the synchrotron idea also has some problems. For example, it needs to have very high-energy electrons to make X-rays, and these electrons are hard to make and keep in the jet. It also needs to have something that can spin them very fast and very often, and this is not easy to do either. The synchrotron idea reminds me of a story I heard about a scientist who accidentally made X-rays by spinning electrons around magnets. He was working on a machine called a cyclotron, which can accelerate particles to high speeds using electric and magnetic fields. One day, he noticed that his machine was making X-rays when he turned it on. He was very surprised and curious about what was happening. He realized that he had accidentally created a synchrotron source of X-rays by spinning electrons around magnets. He decided to investigate this phenomenon further and to share his discovery with other scientists. He was one of the first people to use synchrotron radiation for research and to show its potential for studying different kinds of materials and structures. His name was Ernest Lawrence, and he was a Nobel Prize winner in physics. In conclusion, this new study challenges one of the most common ideas for how jets make X-rays and opens new possibilities for exploring how particle acceleration works in these jets and possibly also elsewhere in the universe. Particle acceleration is a very important process in physics and astronomy because it can produce very high energy particles and radiation that we can observe and study. It can also tell us about the extreme conditions and forces that exist in space. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below.
and I will try to answer them. Until next time, keep looking up and stay curious.